Let me As promised, there they are. That's Frank Caliendo adjusting his camera. Um, and for those who are watching right now on this uh, edited version of the Rich Eisen Show on Zoom, this is take three, um, the third take uh, of Joey Molinaro and Frank Caliendo trying to get this thing done. Um, cause Frank's phone is on the precipice of, of what, what is, what, what, what is your phone resting on right now, Frank? Uh, my wife's holding it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an odd tripod. I'm going to be very honest with you. you know? No, no, no. She's, she's, she, my wife has a tail, so she actually is a tripod. She's a little shaky. Okay, very good. And Joey, you've just got yourself a laptop showing off your, your undisclosed location man cave and your new bar stool hack, looks like. That's right. Yeah, I'm good. I went with the, the higher grade laptop here because I didn't want to be the first guy, the new guy messing things up. Frank's a bet. So Frank can, you know, he can do all this all he wants. Okay. But uh, otherwise, yeah. it's going to be a, a rookie mistake otherwise. So is that is that issued straight from Portnoy uh, when you get hired? Is that part of like the, the hiring package, the hat? Joey? The hat? Yeah, actually. So the CEO sent it to me because in my video that you so kindly were a part of, yes. um, I had to just print off this giant Barstool logo and tape it to the front of a hat. And she was like, hey, could have sent you a real hat. And I was like, yeah, go ahead. So they sent me a nice little care package. Okay. All right. And Frank, where's your hat? Uh, well, I have plenty of them, but uh, you know, I got, I got one of these right here. Little <laughs> FFCA man. Ready to go. Come on, man. He might be a bar stool, but I'm a bar counter, man. <laughs> that is a Gruden-issued fired football coaches association. That's what he's got going on. That's what he, he, he used. Oh, backwards hat kind of guy now. Backwards uh -oh. kind of guy, man. Dude, Gruden, <laughs> Frank, Gruden, Gruden did his fired football coaches association. He had his office next to a Publix in Tampa. You know that, right? You know? Yeah. Like, you, were you, did you ever go to the FFCA? Did you ever? I've been that? by the FFCA at that little, it's this little strip mall yeah. right off like the freeway. But then they did them, they rebuilt the, uh, the studio in Orlando at the Disney complex thing just to make it look exact. Can I say one thing? I want to go back for a second, not to where I was dropping the, the phone or uh, just appreciating you, but I worked at <laughs> Fox for um, nine years. Yeah. And I was at ESPN for I'm not how, how, sure how long. I never got a hat, a free hat from anybody. So, Joey, you're already knocking out of the park, uh, not just on social media, but on headwear. Oh, yeah. And by the way, shout out to them as well. This laptop, courtesy of them. So first week there, bam. What else is in the room that's from Barstool other than you with the hat and the laptop? Joey, else you got that's, um, that's about it. Like I said, I'm in my Steelers man cave and rich. I have a little surprise for you here. I want to, I want to throw it off. This is, this is something that I just remembered right before it came on. And I think all you guys are going to really get a kick out of this. This is a, a photo oh, of wow. rich Eisen, fully haired, rich. I look at that. <laughs> I'm trying to get it like can. Oh, let me see if I can. A little buzz cut. It's like some buzz light stuff. And then I have uh, – that we, we don't just randomly print off pictures of you, Rich. Don't worry. This okay. is an uh, autograph that I got back in, like, what, 2005? Are you kidding me? I'm not. It's, it says, to Joey, and you signed it, Rich Eisen. We didn't actually meet. My dad's best friend was at, I think, a Super Bowl event or something. Okay. And you were there, and he brought me back. I have, like, a Brady Quinn one. I have a Drew Brees one. Um, and then he brought me back a photo of Rich Eisen. And so this was up in my basement and in our man cave. Yep. And uh, here we are today. So we've come full circle. Hey, uh, Rich, I, I don't mean to interrupt Joey, because yeah. that's really great. And uh, there's no way to match Joey on the internet because he's the most unprecedented human being I've ever seen on the internet. He's unbelievable. Very <laughs> um, But I have future, what you're going to look like in the future, an autograph from... Uh, Conrad Bain. Conrad, 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 Conrad this Bain. This will eventually look like. There's Arnold and Willis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you didn't know this, but you're going to be eventually adopting uh, a yeah, couple of perfect. children after yeah. so there's an young issue with, with your maid. Yeah, hold that up. Hold up. Hold it up one more time because we got the before and the later. Yeah. And the current, right here. 2005 Rich and 2045 Rich, right there. <laughs> I got to ask, um, you know, because it's my job to ask follow-up questions, Frank. Um, why do you have a photograph of Conrad Bain, Todd Bridges? 
the great guy well, woman in your in your office. What do you have, I, Frank? Actually, uh, this is the podcast studio, and that's my podcast partner, uh, John Holmberg. Actually, brought that as a present because I had this, uh, which he found pretty cool, which is Mike Tyson's Punch Out, as uh, signed, oh, and uh, there wow. I am in future future Frank Caliendo. <laughs> yeah. You had to move it over it's a little just, bit. It's a me, a Caliendo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! That if is you funny. want anything else, here, here's Brockman, uh, Bubo. <laughs> That's the the, oh, that awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I will take that. <laughs> Frank, why are the Antonio Brown socks behind you, man? I gotta, we gotta. I just, I've noticed those. I'm, I, I can't, I can't do it. Uh, I was wondering well, the same a, thing. Yeah, yeah, Holmberg is a huge uh, Pittsburgh Steelers guy, so that's it's kind of a mock a mock joke. Oh, I tell you what, man, I I had a pair of socks from Antonio Brown too. They were frozen solid, man. <laughs> Perfect. Oh man, Joey, have you uh, run into anybody yet that you've imitated? Have you? Run I'm into- not. You have- no. Oh man, Frank, no. it's not going to be I'm- like for him. Do you think when he gets that? moment where he just crosses paths with somebody he's uh i think it always depends on the person um that's uh there are certain people that would not look me in the eye it's incredible how ridiculous (laughs) that was i don't want to say any names because that would be bad we're just gonna let it out there it'd be horrible it would be uh there there are people that as you know are nice about it but don't always me you know I, I, i know what you're doing then there's like, like Schefter who's like, I know it, you're, I know it, but it doesn't sound like it to me. But you can, you can keep trying. <laughs> Mine's that's Helia, Madam Schefter. Um, I think for Joey, I think it'll be. I mean, there's this thing about uh, Joey Molinero that's, I don't know, it's such a a, a quick rise up that people just want to jump on board. I think yeah. there's that. Um, there's that element. And I was actually reluctant, right? I mean, I talked to Joey a bunch of times before. I'm like, ah, I don't want to just, you know, be a pig jumping on this thing. And we talked a bunch of times and then found the the right thing to actually work together on, uh, which was the Andrew Luck, a uh, Bill Belichick bit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's just kind of, it's just kind of fun. Uh, but I, I'm trying to think. That was funny, man. That who, was who are the people? Who, uh, you, you haven't met Orgeron yet? You haven't met no, him? I haven't met Orgeron. I'm friends with Nick Saban's daughter. Okay. Actually. Hey. So is Nick, like, aware? Is, Nick, <laughs> is Nick aware of what of, of the Saban, Joey? That's the thing. It's the most Nick Saban thing ever because I had her on my show and I asked her and she was like, I'm not really sure. And that's just so perfectly <laughs> Saban because, you know, he's just like, I don't really, I mean, I don't have time for any Twitter, okay? I'm trying to run a football program here. I got my Coke bottle. I got my Dasani bottle. I'm not going to answer any of your questions, all right? You, got the you don't know what Twitter is. You don't care. <laughs> props. He came with his own props. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> but no, I haven't met Orgeron, but the thing is, is Orgeron's on Twitter, and all he ever tweets is, hold up, Tiger. But uh, you got to think that at some point, he has to have run on, you know, into something. So The, the Saban stuff, man, is what the first time that I, I you, you caught my view on Twitter eye, because Brockman and I have been all over the Saban press conference with the Coke bottle. And for some reason, I don't know what it is, but Alabama's podium, Alabama football's podium is the most – um, sensitive microphone. Anytime Saban <laughs> tap the side of the podium, you hear like a thud, right? I mean, like he, right. and, and then he's, and that's got, all he does, right? Because he talks so much with his, I mean, every, that's all, I mean, the whole thing is just his hands. Everything he answers is like this. I don't know how the Coke bottle does just fall off the damn mic, all right? I mean, it's all just eye and the hand motions like I, that. So. Got- <laughs> and I would bet, Rich, I would bet that that microphone is that sensitive because he doesn't really raise his voice ever when even when Saban yells in yeah. those comp or, you know he gets excited yeah. he's still almost at a, a a a whisper yell for sure it's always just stern it's never loud it just gets more stern as he uh, the angrier he gets so, I, <laughs> I always I always say like people who have asked I always say like how I get into Saban is just imagining that like 
I had to go to Jiffy Lube or something and they're like, yeah, your car's going to be fine, but we have to use this uh, little tiny piece. that's like $350 and got to do it today if you want to make your car better. So he's just like, I mean, whatever you got to do, I, 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 I don't want to come in here and spend this kind of money. This isn't where I want to be. All right. But if you got to do that, that's fine. Back Say my deal. favorite, you know, tell my favorite word. Joey knows my favorite Saban word. Oh, it's 100% program. All right. I'm trying to run a football program. <laughs> Not program, program. <laughs> P R O G R U M. Why is that your favorite word? I don't know. It's just it's one of those links. You find those links in impressions where if you if you watch even the evolution of Joey doing the yep. Nick Saban impression, right. it gets better and better and better. I mean, the first one is great, but then That's you right. look at it now and you go, I mean, that was for me 20 years ago with a Madden or something, any almost any impression you do, <laughs> they they just get better and better and better. And that's one of those words that at the beginning, the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, that's good. That's good. And uh, it, it's, you find that word, everything, and that might not have been it for him. I, I, you can talk to that, Joey. But you find a word or a, a phrase, a ramp up, uh, and then the rest of it starts to flow. And then the rest of it becomes the same as those phrases or that word. And sometimes they'll go off on their own tangents. When I was working on an Orange Run, which I kind of gave up on after seeing Joey do it, yeah. uh, just because it kind of became his th one of his things, right. was every time we tried to do Ed Orange Run, like on the podcast or something, we were like, talk about football. And it became, see, it's for cookie. It's good enough for me. <laughs> so my Ed Orange Run is just Cookie Monster. And the Google, oh, that's a gold time. Gold time. <laughs> I wish I had a Cookie yeah. Monster here. Well, that's the thing too, Frank, is that like people will message me, I just, I'm sure they do to you, like people will message me on Twitter or whatever and be like, you got to do a Trump, you got to do a Gruden, you got to do a, a Jim Rome. I'm like, Gruden and Rome are Frank. That's your bread and butter. Like I'm not hopping on those two, you know? Yeah. And so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird wrong. thing where you try to give that a uh, little bit. And Joey's really great about that too, which is another thing I like. So many people just steal on the internet like they watch you do an impression and then they copy it and uh that's a, a a real that's just what it is and now people just show other people how to do impressions on their tiktok feeds in between you know and it, jump you know it's so you're you're watching that and you're going well you're kind of unlocking it for everybody and then it makes which is fine but then everybody's doing it and it's just kind of you just kind of go well there's nothing interesting about this anymore and you you what's, go away from it. What's the word for Madden? By the way, the Madden Summerall stuff that you have been doing, Frank. So good. So friggin' funny, including the one where the guy was, was getting his ass cleaned up <laughs> by a fire hydrant and used the word the day. <laughs> literally had to stop what I was doing. I literally had to stop. Just hearing well, I didn't even, Madden listen, say I the don't, word the day. <laughs> that was the word that I keyed in on for Madden. Good day. Because you know, he's like, you know, I was over in France in those European countries. This was before the coronavirus thing. And, you know, 50, 60 years ago, we would get, I mean, you get there and there's one of those, it's like, hey, that's a nice toilet. And then, boom. <laughs> it's a Bellagio fountain. <laughs> so I don't like to do, like, you always have me do the Madden thing and stuff. I don't love, you know, I, somebody says, do some John Madden. I was like, ah, I've done it for so long. I don't really love doing it on camera because it is so old. Right. But for some reason, with the voiceovers, I was just like, eh, this is kind of like its, whole, uh, its own thing. And then you had the Pat Summerall, along with John Madden. John, have you, have you tried this today, Pat? You bet I have, John. <laughs> had to bring in that ambulance from Madden 86. Have I, ever told you this, have I ever told you the story that CBS Sports told me when I took the job for the U.S. Open? Did I ever tell that story? Brockman knows it very well. Oh, I know. It's my favorite. Okay. So... When I took, I took a job doing um, the late night highlight show for the US Open after I left SportsCenter, NFL Network hired me and then CBS called me when I was on my honeymoon to see what I'd do the late night show that they, they shoehorned in uh, in between Letterman and Kilborn to date the, the era, okay? Kill me, oh, oh, yeah, I, you gotta love me. <laughs> I don't know, you, Big did one. Kill, you did Kilborn? Hey Eisen, you'll get yeah. to your story, but first, breaking news. I love myself. Back to you. <laughs> He's a must follow wow. on Instagram, by the way. Big oh, he, one. Oh, oh, Is oh he really? Yeah, he, he, just the most eccentric 
interesting Instagram feed out ever. Agreed, Joey. We 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 you got to try. You got to check it out. It's Mr. Craig Kilborn. We had him on for a full hour. Uh, went back in September, right, Chris? Yeah, September. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, to celebrate the uh, the ESPN anniversary that neither of us were invited to celebrate. Uh, at any rate, hey, that's Eisen, no Eisen, yeah. I don't want to be a party pooper, but get back to the story. <laughs> so the story is this. The story is this. I get the job, and they tell me, you know, the rules of doing tennis because a couple of matches I was going to call, and they said two things: is shut up during the action, and read the card we give you when there's something for you to promote or read for the sponsor on the air and I'm like that's basic stuff they're like trust me there's an issue sometimes and I'm like with who and they said well when Summerall used to do <laughs> the tennis you remember it was Pat used to do US Open tennis <laughs> Pat they would hand him the copy that you would read for the Goodyear blimp you know, hey, in its 50th year, the Goodyear blimp is over Manhattan and it looks beautiful and Goodyear, you know, the tires, the best, whatever it is. And they're like supposed to read it. And I'm like, he didn't do it. And they're like, well, sometimes Pat would get lost and uh, maybe, you know, <laughs> had a little bit of that. And so it would be the shot of the New York skyline and he has to read all the copy. And all you hear is Manhattan. <laughs> and that's it there it is so i got to do my <laughs> my play-by-play -play. they show they're like okay grab card 43 it's the goodyear blimp shot they show a shot of the skyline and all i go is manhattan <laughs> and they screamed curse words in my headset read the effing card you you're like oh my god there's my story summer all is just the old time <laughs> greatest when it comes to oh, that. well that old bit was that he never and it fits like that manhattan thing he didn't speak in sentences yes it was just phrases to the 20 to the 25 there's a man down <laughs> <laughs> and then he would then he would pronounce the comma in murder she wrote by pausing a very long time <laughs> murder she wrote that's right. <laughs> oh, man. By the so, way, there uh, was on an NFL network last yeah. night, that last night or the night before. People now text right. me or uh, message me on uh, Twitter and stuff when there's an old NFL game on. And it was Madden and Summerall doing uh, Patriots Rams. And it was classic Pat Summerall because younger people who hadn't really paid attention to that that much were, were uh, tweeting at me. And it was uh, Warner, Holt, out of bounds. <laughs> that was his play -by -play. <laughs> oh man so joey um one of the things you did recently that i loved and i retweeted um wasn't really an imitation of a specific person at all but yeah. you coming back from a date and being interviewed in a closet for a press conference um uh where you were just like that nonchalant quarterback who says something without saying anything was it uh, any specific quarterback you actually did have in mind right there? Joey, where did that one come from? Well, my mom is a huge Eli Manning fan. Um, and Eli Manning has always been somebody to me who's been the king of, like you said, saying something without saying absolutely anything at all in the most dull way possible. I'd like to think I was a little bit cooler than Eli Manning. Um, maybe looked a little bit better than him. He's kind of goofy and kind of that like just dead face that he has on, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, so just a little bit of that as an inspiration, but no, I mean, you guys know just being in locker rooms all the time and like, you just have to sit there and, you know, you have the people talk about this a little bit and it's just, okay. All of a sudden they're talking about how the game plan didn't work, but it did work and we'll draw it up again next week. And you're like, Oh, what am I going to use with that <laughs> at all? Um, so that's really what it was. Just like, taking that in real life obviously because i've been around it so much in sports and let's make these parallels happen right. and it worked the whole thing is just downright hilarious so and that, thank you rich that even that though that's not a direct like impression there dana carvey talks about this too and he's he's explained it the best that i've heard is that you do an impression of a non-famous person and that's a character you do impression of a famous person and that's an impression. Now, the, the big difference between those is that you have to have a little more setup 
for the character who's the non-famous impression. Joey's really great at that, at immediately giving you the point of view of the person so you go, oh God, I know exactly where this is going. But you, I mean, it's like when you would watch Cheers back in the day and you know Cliff or Carla's gonna say something and then they say it and you're like, that's exactly what they're supposed to say. How did I not think of that? Those are great moments. And that was one of the things when I talked to Joey, uh, 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 my grandson, uh, <laughs> all about- I'll get a text what, like three times a week from Frank, by the way, that'll be like, how's the homework? And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Am I supposed to be studying <laughs> up on an impression? And it's just this, uh, the next line. Oh, that's supposed to go to my son. Which is I do actually do send that. That, that happens because my son's Joey Caliendo. He's Joey Molinero. And I had to change him in are my phone. Serious? Are you yeah. serious? Oh, yeah. I've texted him a few times with things uh, no, that Jeff. were supposed to go to my son. He's like, you're being too loud up there. I'm like, where the hell are you, Frank? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's because i was belichick and i have, I have a listen there's uh i have uh cameras all over your apartment this is <laughs> knock that off in your living room <laughs> oh Rich. man that is so funny so um all right let's get into a couple here if you don't mind uh winding it up and letting it fly um so what's your favorite imitation you've been doing right now lately joey which one do you like to do the most because i don't want to just grab one that you're not is it, is it Andrew Luck? Is it the latest one? I mean, I can, I, I always love that. Uh, what's interesting about, I was thinking one that I like to do too, and it's one that Frank obviously started, but then one that I've piggybacked off and has actually worked pretty well uh, is Mel Kuyper. Um, okay. Because, okay. You know, Frank does a lot with, you know what I mean, with that. Oh. Th those two, obviously my college coaches a lot. Um, I like poking fun at Cowherd with his analogies and everything a lot. I don't have a mess with but i can kind of you know okay make it. all right so then choose which one you want and then frank um if you want i don't know is it okay if I do, Morgan do Freeman, where i'd like the two of you guys to go back and forth talking about what show is your binging while you're sheltering in place right now okay <laughs> if you want to just just choose just go back and forth have a conversation suggesting what the other one should watch um uh, that's basically the, I, I kind of who's lining uh, is this anyway. So would you do Morgan Freeman or is that one that you're like, screw it, I don't want to do anymore? Uh, I don't I don't care, Sonny. We can pretty much do. I'm, I'll oh. probably bounce in and out of five or six while we're doing this. Maybe <laughs> Tony Stark will show up. That happens, you know. Let's go back and forth. Here, I've been binging. Hey, um, let me ask you this. And I know this is a pretty good setup right here. Hey, um, uh, has anybody uh, uh, done a... Uh, 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 a Joe Exotic? Anyone? Anyone out there? Anybody? Anybody tried that? Joe, it's a setup. Oh, Joe Exotic is just the Oklahoma version of a uh, Mike Gundy out there. That's pretty popular right now. And you look at, uh, you take Mike Gundy, you add a little bit of sass to him, then all of a sudden you got Joe Exotic talking about his tiger pups. You want to watch something pretty good? I say you come watch us on my farm. Okay, now uh, uh, do me a favor, bring it down, and it becomes Ed Orr's run. Down it, bring it. <laughs> One thing I certainly do like to watch is the Tigers. Not only on the football field, but that Tigers. Pause, 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 pause. Bring it up. Joke's at it. See, I did, a, I did a bit about this today between who's going to be the Tiger King, whether it's going to be Coach O or myself. I've been doing this for over 30 years. I can say to myself, the true Tiger King. But I've got to tell you, the true Tiger King reigns in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, with Joe Burrow and myself. Go Tigers. I tell you what, man. Both those guys are exotic, and I got the same eyebrows as that guy, man. <laughs> Joe Exotic, here we go. <laughs> oh, Coach Gruden. Coach Gruden's entered the chat. <laughs> very excited. Won, man. Very Andrew. excited about hey, this one. Uh, you still uh, you working on that... those math problems, man? <laughs> yeah, just spider to y banana day in and day out. I'll never forget, Coach. <laughs> spider uh, to y I'm, I'm I'm teaching that to my daughter. Uh, she can already read, of course, because she's my daughter and I went to Stanford. <laughs> I, just, I just thought of a new character, Joe Neurotic. That, that's what I'm going to do. That's what my Joe Neurotic is going to be, this guy right here. And I, I can't, uh, I, is, is the camera all right? Is everything okay? Okay. And mine turns into Larry the Cable Guy. That's what that's all about. Get her done. 
Yeah, that's fine. That works. <laughs> I see you got those Antonio Brown socks behind you. Uh, good player. Uh, I think uh, he's got a little bit of a few marbles loose up top, if I would say. But uh, I don't think this should hurt him to come back, per se. He's just uh, kind of a wild guy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Andrew. He was great when we could find him. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like uh, Catch Me If You Can. Uh, I've been watching that a lot, the big Leo DiCaprio fan, but uh, you couldn't catch him too well, could you, Coach? <laughs> well, how about this one? No, you, could not, you could not catch him. You could only hope to contain him. Huh? How's that, man? I've how heard about that. this? Better Call Saul. You ever do that, huh? You ever watch Better Call Saul? You need Better Call Saul, man? You know. are, aren't you, Rich? Huh? Oh. I'm going rich. Oops, sorry. That was a setup for you, Rich. Oh, rich. yeah. No, I, I thought Rich yeah, maybe wanted to be on his I'm own sorry. show. No, I, am on, <laughs> I, I am, actually. I caught up on that last night, just last night, Coach. I caught up on it. It's a slow burn, though. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, I, I love it. I just I walk around being Mike Ermatron. Okay. All right. Everything is <laughs> going to be fine. Don't worry. We'll take care of it. Very good. Frank. Was this Gustavo Frank? Did he? That might be a little bit of a spoiler <laughs> alert, man. Oh. <laughs> oh, you ever man. try that chicken, man? That stuff's good. You got to clean the fryer, though. Make sure you clean the fryer, man. Sweat it out. Back to you, Luck. Oh, it's coming back to me. I was going into saving. <laughs> so I got the Coke bottle in the oh, water here. So I guess I can keep I guess I can keep them here. If we, uh, oh, hold on, Tony Robbo and Jim, you should have seen it coming. It's incredible. It's amazing. He's going into the saving. If Caliendo screwed up, he wasn't watching the props. Get ready. He's doing his own thing. So here we go. Okay. Oh my god. Right. <laughs> wow. How do you the Mike Irma Trout bobblehead, man? Jeez, what is that set of collection? Oh Here we go. Throw it over. Let's throw it over to Nick Saban. What's making him angry today? Well, there's a lot of things making me angry because I'm quarantined in my house. And I can't run on my football program. I, I'm trying to win another national championship. I got Ed Orgeron out here, man, doing his media tour. Everybody's in love with Ed Orgeron. What about Uncle Nick? All right. Uncle Nick's been around for 10 plus years. I'm winning national championships all the time. I got a statue. I don't see a statue for that, man. I, I got time for it. So just quit asking. <laughs> And now I have to say, with no further ado, <laughs> impromptu Stephen A. Smurf. And I understand this is Smurf-tastic. What in Smurf and Tosh Smurfation has happened to the Rich Eisen show today? This Zoom is Zoom Smurferific. It's Stephen A. Smurf, everybody. <laughs> it's too good. And I am it's completely, good. utterly, and see? smurfably <laughs> deniable. In every single situation. Oh my God. It's so funny. My wife, who knows Stephen A very well, just walked down the hallway. She's just opened up the door and said, What the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I'm like, it's Stephen A Smurf, everybody. Of course it's <laughs> years ago, before years ago, there was a transition time where Stephen A had left uh, uh uh, Sorry, I'm ESPN. My Jets, um, my Jets Cup. Pardon me. Say it again. He was over. At, he was over at Fox. Remember, he had that show that was Frankly Speaking or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then it went away, and he went over to Fox Sports for a little bit. That's right. And I saw him in an elevator, or right in an elevator. And he goes, "Do me a favor, Mr. Caliendo. All the impressions and impersonations you do, don't ever, ever do me." <laughs> <laughs> Is that really what happened? Yeah, I mean, it was semi-joking, but it was like, yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, he just like, ran with <laughs> Yeah, he just looked at me and goes, do me a favor. Don't ever, ever do me. And he had somehow timed the, the elevator doors. <laughs> there was another time that we're in LA. Uh, it was a, a Clippers game. I took my son and in the elevator, Stephen A, it was Stephen A incognito. He's just kind of sitting there with his head down a little bit. And he goes, Frank. I was like, yeah, Frank. Like, what? It's me. Stephen A. <laughs> like he was being <laughs> quiet for the other people in the elevator. <laughs> Stephen A too. That's good. I, I, I'm actually a spy. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a covert operation. This is the level I actually speak at. And I'm, wa I'm worried about Russians. I'm taking it over. 
I'll make it all fine. You ever see the Americans? That's me. Never Mom. seen the Americans. Not a big fan of that one. I'm more of a movie guy. I like to go to the movies. Can't do it right now in the quarantine. But my wife and I do sit down every night over a pizza. Maybe go to a local establishment. Bring in a movie. See, that's my that's my Kuiper. Is that? It's not bad. That's really good, man. Oh, it's very very. Does a tremendous job. He, he, he stresses movie. I'm more of a guy who stresses Todd. 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 Yeah. Todd. Todd. Hey, uh, maybe it's maybe it's Mel and Kel Kuiper. Hey, that's my brother Kel. Kel. Uh, uh, I, uh, or or uh, or hell, the guy who does all the pre, you know, he he uh, grades all the priests, you know, that that bit that I put out. You got Mel and Hell Kuiper. Oh my God! I think we're Chris Brockman. We're we're witnessing a little workshopping between these guys. Yeah, I always wonder what the process is for you guys. Like, uh, who's texting whom? Who's coming up with the ideas? Is it free flowing? Uh, but between us, I mean, yeah. we kind of just throw things out to each other i mean not not even uh i guess just recently for some sketches and stuff but I, we don't work on impressions together so much john holmberg who do, i do the podcast with right. caliendo cast we do that constantly and go back and forth and we had kevin pollock on a few weeks ago he's amazing and kevin pollock yeah. talked about he and dana carvey would do the same thing so you go back and forth we send you got to go rich because you, you got that uh i appreciate you being on kind of look no <laughs> Are you kidding? I don't want this to end. Are you freaking kidding me? This is the greatest thing ever. No. Uh, but yeah, I, I think just came in the room. That's all. I think uh, one of the things uh, uh, Joey and I haven't really done that kind of a thing, but it, it's uh, sometimes you'll do that, but it's more we go back and forth. But hey, what about this idea? So we don't step on each other uh, a lot. So that's kind of I think more of the idea there. And that's how the Kuiper thing was birthed because I, you know, I knew it was one of his and I messaged him I messaged Frank and on Twitter and that's where he was like you know a lot of people just do kind of the one that I do so send me yours so I sent it to him and then we had a call and that's where it kind of came up with the idea of like okay you know like I said I kind of focus more on like dragging out the war whether a movie or thing like that and then yours is kind of the time yeah I like said basically said. don't do Todd 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 that's because that's that's all that's like doing not gonna die that's right. the car right, right like you can't sure. own like you can't really own an impression, especially in this day and age. But what you can't, what you don't want somebody to do is take your version of the character, and that's the tough thing because the, you'll see people. You can tell when an impression is quote unquote stolen because they're they're just doing it. I had a guy go up before me on stage one time, twenty years ago, and he started doing his John Madden bit. And he started with, "Here's a guy." I'm like, "That's that's my bit. Don't don't take the you know the actual bit." That's the, that's the thing. Like, and I come up with, I'm more into these and it doesn't work as well on the internet I found, but uh, the stuff that used to work on sketch uh, TV shows, which wasn't so much the dead on impression or finding a little thing, it was finding a big thing. And that doesn't work as well on the internet to me. People will be patient and find that interesting moment or two that you find in the impression. If you're too big, they, they don't like it as much. And uh, I'm trying to think of one of the ones we used to do. You know, Will Sasso used to do it with Kenny Rogers. He'd be like, I'm Kenny Rogers. And this is Jack. And he'd turn into a complete character. Because it's Will, it would probably still work. But those things, uh, people get mad at me when I do mad and going, <laughs> they don't like that. They like the one that sounds like the actual sound. So it's a weird, a weird thing that the smaller video people are watching on these little handheld uh, uh, devices as opposed to the bigger, medium-sized TVs. And it's a different way people look at stuff. Well, let me tell you this, man. This has been uh, a total blast. Um, and one way, I guess, Joey, for you to inoculate your, yourself for having bits stolen is just to create a Smurf uh, of that character. So if anybody busts out the Smurf, they know it's been totally stolen, you know? So like we, my like we said with Cowherd. I'll, I'll work on that with Cowherd maybe yeah. and come up with somebody for it. But uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, follow Joey Molinaro on Twitter at Joey Molinaro at Frank Caliendo. This has been a blast, guys. Thanks for the laugh. We needed it. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Anything Thank else? For sure. And we'll be seeing you on Barstool, right, Joey? We'll see you That's on. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully there, as you can see. So uh, I'm just pumping out stuff there when I can and uh, working with Frank a little bit, too. And check out the Caliendo cast as well, right, Frank? Correct. Yeah. Is there anything else you want me to, to show no, you? Man, uh, normally, uh, what I've done with my guests is say, show me something from your office, but you've done yeah. quite a bit. Look at that one right there. See that? That's, That's the a, that. from, uh, from Hard Knocks, right? 
Uh, nice, man. Is that the hard knocks? I have a couple of them, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> because every time oh, I talk like to this. the team, they win. Look at uh, this. this is... Oh, this is this is actually a, this is actually a real game. November nineteenth, nineteen fifty-five. That's when I was hanging a clock on my toilet. I slipped <laughs> off, hit my head, and I came up with this: the flux capacitor, man. <laughs> Knock on wood if you're with me. Knock Thanks, guys. That's Frank Caliendo and Jolie Mulinaro here on the Rich Eisen Show.